Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. In this episode, I'm going to talk to you about the new features of Photoshop 2015-1. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. My name is Serge Ramelli. I'm a French photographer living in the amazing, the ever standing tall city of Paris, France, and also the very sunny city of Los Angeles, California. Adobe just came out with a new release of Photoshop 2015-1. It's got a few cool features that I want to show you. But first, if you want to get the raw file of all my past episodes, I'm talking over a thousand raw files, preset for Lightrooms, Photoshop actions, textures for free, all you have to do is subscribe to my newsletter. Once you subscribe to my newsletter, you will get a daily newsletter and you will get access to all these goodies. But for now, let me show you Photoshop 2015-1. All right, mesdames et messieurs, so I wanted to show you a few of the new options that just came out in the new release of Photoshop 2015.1, uh, which is the one that just got released a couple of days ago. And, um, well, the major thing you will realize when you open Photoshop is that the design of the interface is different. It's called flat designs. Everything is more flat. And you got this new screen. It's sort of like a welcome screen, which is pretty cool, where you have, like, basically all the different files that you have opened recently and uh, that's that's very interesting because you can you know just click and open it just one thing you know is this will work only with the files that you have opened since you install Photoshop 2015 it will not work on uh, anything else so let's open this file for example okay that's a raw file that's already retouched I'm just gonna open it and I want to show you a few of the th new things that there is in Photoshop one of the main new features that they have, of course, you can see the design is different, is the ability to uh, customize the toolbar. You see, if you click here, uh, actually, you see this little dot here? If you click on this, if you right click on this and you go up here, let me zoom out, you have this option to edit the toolbar. And I did it, let me just, I'm gonna restore the default. But on the left is your toolbar with all the tools and on the right, is called extra tools, meaning you're gonna take them out and put it into an extra place. So for example, you know, if you don't want the hardboard tool because that's a designer tool, you can take it out. You know, the single row marquee tool, I never use these tools. Anyway, you just make a selection of what you wanna keep and what you don't wanna keep. And in real time, it's gonna change this. And you see there's different group of tools. Uh, they are based on shortcuts. Um, I honestly, this is a feature that I will not really be using because I only, only use shortcuts when I work with Photoshop. I only work maybe with five or six tools like B for brush, uh, C for the crop tool, J for all the tools, uh, in, um, like spot healing brush tools, patch tool, etc. But anyways, if you're new to Photoshop, it can be cool to customize what you want. And once you finish that, you can even save a preset here uh, with you know, whatever you did there. So that's a really cool, nice feature for the interface. Another one that they did, which I kind of like, I mean, let's say I wanted to put a title here uh, and I want to use a font. The problem with the fonts is that there's so many fonts you have on your system. And now you have the possibility of just clicking, like let's say I use a lot of the Arial family, I can clear here and make them favorite. And then I can filter by favorite. I only have these fonts appearing which is cool. And you can also add directly fonts from Typekit here, directly here. So that's that's cool because you can just, you know, favorite your best font and you don't have to go through all your fonts. That's something that I really personally like. So let's say that you did like a, a tool box that you really like, you know, you've selected the tools. You can go and, you know, you can do the same thing here to choose your windows. I, that's, for example, that is my ideal scene for on my MacBook Pro where I only have like layers. Uh, channel and pass, which I already use, and library, property, and history, which I already use. I can go here and I can say new workspace, and I can select the toolbar as being part of my, and call this, you know, whatever I want, like uh, MacBook Pro one screen, because sometimes I have two screen, and that's how I want Photoshop to be, and I can save it with the menus and the keyboard shortcut. I'm not going to do that. So that's really a cool option. Uh, the next thing is something that I really like that they change in Photoshop and in Lightroom is the possibility to add A's with the brush tool. Let me show you what that means. So here is an image I have of uh, New York. Uh, it was a 
taken last summer. I used it in my book. Very cold. Uh, the, the lake in the middle of Central Park was completely frozen. And I'm going to show you like a full retouch using this new tool of the dehaze. For To start with, I'm just going to open up the shadows, bring down the highlights. Okay, I'm going to do my black point and my white point. You've seen me doing this over and over if you know my tutorials. Um, I think the white balance, I'm going to leave it kind of blue, maybe add a bit of magenta. I want to maybe desaturate a bit the photo. And I'm going to put like a little minus clarity. Okay, I'm going to go here in lens correction, click on upright so that everything is kind of straight. And voila. And now I just did that to show you this new tool, which I really love. If you click here on the brush tool, and that actually also works. So that's the brush. You click on the brush tool. And now you have this new option where you can add or take out A's with the brush tool. So if I go left and I start brushing, I'm actually adding haze and I think that's kind of cool so I can you know uh, because actually there was a lot of haze that morning and somehow it didn't appear in the photo so I'm trying to, to put it back so I can add haze like this you know but with the brush it's very selective you go, or I can go the opposite and dehaze and when you dehaze you basically add contrast okay and I'm going to do like a whole atmospheric tutorial later on where I will show you more examples uh, right now, I've put too much. You can click on Erase. I'm going to erase some of the haze I did in a f in a foreground. Make sure my feather is at 100% so I don't see the brush strokes. Voila. And I was just to show you, I'm going to maybe leave some of it here. You can go back on Add and just re-add some of it a little bit like this. All right. Maybe not that strong. But that's something that's really cool. The ability to add some haze. Okay, I'm going to cancel that. That was just to show you. Another thing which I find is really cool is the way you use library now in uh, in Photoshop. For example, I like to do sometimes some sky replacement on my photos. So here's a sky that I've been using over and over and over again. One thing you can do is you can just now you can drag, uh, click and drag in the library module, which is here. Uh, for example, this background element, and it's going to synchronize with the Creative Cloud, meaning you can now use it on apps, you can use it on other files, it's going to be there forever. All I did is click and drag it, and for example, I can take another photo, which is um, this one, and I can take it from my library, and I can just put it over, it's going to put it as a smart object. You know, I'm going to maybe put this in uh, Multiply, that's what I like to do sometimes, you know, and uh, and voila, I'm going to add, for example, on top of this, a black and white layer so that everything is black and white. And on this one, I'm going to click here on the mask tool, take a brush, B for brush, make it big using the Alt and Control key. And with a black brush, I'm just going to feather it. And voila, and I just added the sky in two seconds and it's available for anything else that I want to do for any other photos. I think this is really cool. For example, this is something um, uh, I, uh, a friend of mine created. He created like, you know, some little gradients here, black, uh, which is, you know, a little blue, a little orange and some uh, light rays here. So let me show you how this is gets added to the photo. You know, if I like what I did here on this photo, I can just take this, the light rays, and I can just drag and drop it in my library and the light rays will be available to be used on any other photo. Uh, maybe this one is not going to work, but you know, I could, uh, yeah, this one is not going to work, but you get the idea. You can just drag and drop. And I think this is really cool to be able to have like your library of things, which is there and you can just drag and drop it. So that's some of the new features uh, of the new Photoshop, what I really like and that I'm really going to use a lot more is the library and the fact of being able to do some local haze here and there. I think this is really cool. I love doing that. And I'm going to make a full tutorial on how to add fog using this new option with Lightroom or Photoshop. Voila. So that's a new Photoshop 2015 and what I like the most about it.